Well, I'm really happy how this knife turned out. It's really neat. Um, one thing that I, I found out as I was cleaning it is that it did have some uh, forging marks in there. And I wanted to leave those in. It was like drop forged. So it just had some scale imprints and stuff like that. And I thought it would be cool as opposed to taking it all the way down like I normally do on the axes. If you guys have seen, I'll put like a mirror polish on those. And um, But this just wasn't that way. And I think it was very important to stay true to the original and um, just put a... a blue finish on it. That's how it came. They also specified that it had to have cherry handles. I wanted to leave the original cherry handle. Now guys, this is a very, very rare piece. And um, it's not like it's extremely valuable. It's just rare. There's not a lot of these. This was for medics in the uh, Marine Corps. And uh, contrary to popular belief with these, these were not used for amputation. You use a bone saw for amputation or you go to the joint and that's never done in the field. Um, they'll tie a tourniquet in the field. So this is a bolo. This was used to cut through jungle. That's pretty much all it was. You could use it as a shovel as well. It's got a nice little pick point right here. And this is sharpened all the way around the front. So it does a good job of piercing, shockingly, because it has a lot of weight to it. I am not sharpening this. The reason is, <clears throat> This knife was given to me by Barzee Stan Zinkowski, and uh, he wanted to see a restoration done on it. I want to pass this on to my father-in-law. He was a U.S. Marine, and I'm just, uh, man, I think he's going to love it. So I did not put an edge on it. We're going to leave the edge like this because this is going to go in one of his display boxes. Very cool restoration. So, we get a lot of questions. We get a ton of questions about why I do what I do, and so I thought at the end of these videos, why don't I answer those questions for you? The number one question we always get is, why don't you get a sandblaster? I have a sandblaster. I don't use a sandblaster all the time. The reason I don't is some things don't require sandblasting. When I'm dealing with cast and um, I don't need to get into like little tiny nooks and crannies, uh, I like the way the cast looks raw. So I generally don't paint my castings. A lot of times you'll see me use the rust converter. It leaves a really nice finish unless I want to leave it just raw and then I'll just oil coat it. I think it looks beautiful and as long as you keep your cast oiled for a while, it's protected. What is that tool you're always using? Well, this is by Snap-on. This thing is uh, 15,000 RPM. It's got a lot of power. I really like it. But hold the phone. I've been waiting for Milwaukee to come out with one. They're a lot cheaper, and Milwaukee has the fuel up to 24,000 RPMs. I will be getting one of those to test for you guys soon. I can't imagine that it's, it's, it's going to be awesome. I'm really excited about that. So you guys saw me use this die grinder, and a lot of people are going to think, man, that's really aggressive. He's using that on that steel. Well, let me show you. I'll bend it. It's not ripping into my hands. It's not causing any damage. This is a Rolock disc, right? And this is a Scotch Brite material. So this is actually Norton's brand, which I like better. 3M makes Scotch Brite, so it's like a trademark name. So these are called cookie wheels, is what we refer to them as. But this one right here is from Norton. Uh, it's thicker, it lasts longer, and I think it's better. I'll put a link to these in the description. One of these guys lasts me like 10 projects. I'll use an 80 grit Norton ceramic blaze to take off the vast majority of whatever I'm, you know, removing. And then this goes over and smooths that out like butter. Just really, really clean edges. And this guy was really marred up right here and this lines didn't meet. It was just chopped up and so we had to fix that. And as you can see now, it is smooth as silk. They batoned on this with something, something hard and now it's just completely slick and smooth. I really like it. She's sexy. I use super blue in this, uh, Birchwood Casey. I don't like this stuff. It, it's, it's too strong. It, it, it comes on really, really quickly and really hard and then just dies. If you do use this, guys, dilute it first. And it doesn't make your project look very good. So what you do is you just go back over it with a real fine grit sandpaper. I use 3000 grit and you just buff it off. And then you go back and put another one, another coat and another coat and another coat until you have a nice smooth finish like that. And it looks great. I'm frustrated and sorry that my camera did not get that shot of me actually pulling those pins apart. I've had this knife for six months. I haven't done anything with it because I was really nervous about damaging those pins. I wanted to use the original pins. It was important to me that I could keep as much of that knife together with the original components as I could. I was almost tempted just to go ahead and smooth all this out and then marry another piece on here and use the bottom part of this. but. I didn't. I had a piece of cherry wood that worked uh, just as well. One day I'm going to have to just put time-lapse footage of me sticking something like this in the smart washer and then uh, letting you guys see how it works. Once again, Norton brand. This is like an 800 grit kind of a Scotch-Brite pad. They're not called Scotch-Brite. Once again, that's 3M. All I did was rub that down every maybe every five minutes. I would come in and rub it and that helps to keep the surface, uh, all the rust that it actually attacks, 
it helps to remove that really quickly because it's it's real loose. You just kind of rub it down real quick. You could probably do it with a towel. Um, having a little bit of abrasive bite in there is good though, and um, and then it allows the um, the solution and the microbes to attack the rust that's under there. I am using um, Aussie Juice Seven in here, so there's I think there's a total of seven, and it is the most hardcore one. And uh, they thought it would work well for me because of the restoration. So and it does, man. I'll, I'll it's it's just incredible how well it cleans. And the fact that I have a parts washer that actually removes surface rust is great. Now, as you saw down here on the tang, it really didn't do a lot to remove a lot of the rust that was down here because that stuff was pretty caked on. It was pretty thick. So you want to use something like a rust remover or, you know, a lot of you guys like evaporust. Well, guys, I hope you like this restoration. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, <laughs> tell me everything I did wrong. And we'll see you next round. Thanks. I really should sharpen it, though, right? Like feels wrong not to sharpen it. You know, that's the thing about having, have, I don't know what this weighs, two, two pounds maybe? <laughs> I don't think it needs to be sharp to cut. <laughs> it's probably fine. So, I don't know, should I sharpen it? No. I can't sharpen it.